Hey there, dragons. Welcome back. This is the one, the only Mr. Sutton. Yes, you may have seen me in other feature films such as the Avengers Endgame. Here I am in this shot. Check it out. Yep, I was very happy to be in that action scene. It was a lot of fun. But hey, we're not here to talk about my famed Hollywood career. Let's get started with today's lesson, shall we? Okay, so we've got a lot to discuss today. And let's jump right into manage back so on manage back in today's assignment for april the 13th it's kind of long don't worry i'm going to walk through everything simply uh outlining it all for you and of course if you have questions comments or whatever you know that you can always post them in our ms teams chat room you can email me i will answer that at all hours pretty much or you can send me a text a voice or even do video conferencing as i talked about last class. By the way, we are going to have our first live stream class next week, so be ready for that. I will send more information on that very soon. I will email you and I will post it in the manage back messages. So get ready for live streaming discussions. Woo! And the crowd goes wild. All right, so first thing I want to talk about. Last class, I asked you to turn in four things, and here's a checklist. Your C1 formative, your C4 formative, your homemade tourist treat iMovie that should have two parts to it. The first half should include your vacuum forming video, how you made your vacuum forming model to be printed. Now that should have been done in Fusion 360. We had several classes to work on that. So that should be at the beginning of your video. You also should show me how you export it from Fusion into Cura. I need to see that you know how to do that. The second half of your video should talk about your homemade tourist treat and how you make it. Right? It was a, a video di uh, manufacturing diary that shows the work that you put into making your homemade tourist treat. The fourth thing that you turned in for, yep, fourth, is the homemade tourist treat advertisement poster. Now those were awesome there was some really amazing work turned in there very creative i loved it so proud of you all okay so let's take a quick review of each of these first shall we here we go c1 now this one comes to us from fiona hey fiona how you doing girl now this is a really really good uh, manufacturing plan here this is great she has specific units for for things like heat but what she doesn't have are units for quantity like here she does say I have 125 grams of salt but up here she says grease the baking pan with butter how much butter do I add right so Fiona and everyone else out there you need to make sure that your C1 plan includes all the appropriate units not just temperature for cooking, but how much of the material you applied, right? This needs to be a plan that you can send to me and I could make your exact product. And you know what? I'm pretty bored at home. I'm thinking I might try that and send some of the results to you. So double check. This is your formative. I'm going to give you summative feedback soon or formative feedback soon. But in the meantime, Double check your own C1s and make sure you have applied all the appropriate units. Overall though, this is fantastic and this is exactly what I'm looking for. A description, a list of the materials, the equipment, the process, and then the time required to it. So very good, Fiona. Uh, if you still remember the, the measurements though, if you know approximate size of a bowl, medium bowl is probably fine actually, that's fine, I got it. Over here you do give the measurements, two tablespoons, one half cup. One more example, this one comes to us from Jean Lee. Hey girl, how's it going? Jean also did a really, really good job with hers. So uh, she kind of flipped it a little bit. Uh, it's not quite the same order, but it's totally fine. I get it, I dig it, they don't have to be the same, I like it. But here she's got a very brief description on the left, right? Get the ingredients, make condensed milk, mix it all up, put it in a bowl, freeze, powder cut, and so on. On the right, she describes it with the process. Um, that, that description process, it's a little confusing. Either one is fine. But uh, Jane, you did the same thing here. You don't have any measurements. So how much sugar, how much cocoa, how, what size bowl, um, how much condensed milk, right? 
So uh, Gene, you might want to go through there and make sure you add some quantities. It's very important that when you're teaching somebody to make something, they know how much they're going to need, right? If you're going to build something, how much PLA do you need? How much wood do you need? How much string, glue, whatever, right? In our case, how many grams or teaspoons or tablespoons, how many pints or liters of these cooking ingredients. That's very, very, very important. All right, otherwise, very good job on C1. So let's jump over to C4. This one comes to us from Haben. Excellent work. This is beautiful. Now, this could be a little bit more detailed. Overall, she does say like here, the, the material was just simply pan and she says she wants to add oil. But I'm thinking what kind of oil? Canola oil, lemon oil, if that's even a thing. I don't know, there's all kinds of different cooking oils, right? Almond oil, peanut oil, there's tons and tons of oils, vegetable oil. Um, and what kind of pan? What kind of knife? Butter knife? Right? But what kind of knife? What kind of pan? What kind of oil? The more specific, the more detailed you can get with your plan, the easier someone else can follow it. And that is the goal, right? To get a 7 or an 8, a score of a 7 or 8, your plan has to be good enough that somebody else can follow it and make the exact same thing. So if we don't know what kind of pan or what kind of oil, especially oil, it's going to make a big difference. Otherwise, this is a really good document. Could be more descriptive, descriptive down here. Design changes, and this goes for everybody. It doesn't tell you to justify. It does say to annotate and explain the improvements here. Explain. But if you really want to get up to that eight level, then you probably want to put some justifications. So like she says, I would put a strawberry instead of an iced strawberry. And my first thought is, cool, I, okay, why? If you can explain that why, then I'm not going to ask because I understand. But it also helps whoever sees this in the future, a customer, a business partner, a boss, um, uh, whoever, they're going to have the answer and they're not going to have to ask you. And that's going to benefit you in your professional life and in your school life as you go forward. So it's a good habit to start justifying things with a simple because or after. I would put a strawberry instead of ice strawberry because and your reason, right? It could be a period and the next sentence could say, this would improve the product Again, because, right? There's a lot of ways you can say it. But otherwise, this is really good. This is what I'm looking for. Some people only listed one or two improvements to the plan or to the product. That's not really going to get you a grade that you're going to want. You need to try to be very creative and look for three or four or five if you can. Two is great, but I know that we can think of more. Okay, I know we can think of more. Also, some people did not include pictures of either the plan or the product. That's gonna make, um, that's gonna kind of hold your grade down lower. Make sure you include those visual aids. Show me your HTT, show me your plan for manufacturing. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Oh, actually, we got one more example. This one is Luna's. Luna, oh my goodness, look at those chocolates. Girl, I don't even know how you made these hearts and leaves, but I want these. I hope you saved me one. All right, so Luna did a fantastic job. Again, I would say we could add some justifications, right? The chocolate designs could be made a little more precise. Okay, I think that's a great improvement, but why? Again, I didn't, I didn't uh, require that, but it will help in the scoring process. Um, again, you've got three improvements to the plan. You've got three to the product. That's good, but let's see if we can get up to four or five or more because I feel certain you could probably find more. And that's true for everybody, all right? So, hey, if I just showed one of your, your C1, C4s here, it means you've done a good job. We've all done fantastic, but everybody can take this advice and probably make some good improvements. Okay, let's move on. The videos, oh boy, 
So the videos. So this one is Sophie's. I'm just gonna show a little bit of it. First you put the microwave at 175 degrees Celsius, bottom and top. Then you put a square a baking sheet in a form of 20 by 30. Then you add 250 grams of butter into a bowl. Okay, you know what I really liked about it? She's showing what she's doing and she's giving specific directions about what temperature to set, how many grams of butter or other ingredients. That is fantastic. Now when I watch this though, you know what I'm missing? Can you all guess what I'm missing? What I'm looking for? I'm looking for the original goal of our 3D printed chocolate treat, which isn't there. So if you turn in a video like Sophie's, which is a great video, that's a very, very, very good uh, video there, but it is missing the first half here that I do definitely want to see. So this one comes from Clement. Clement made a really great tourist chocolate treat model. I hope we can print it. We gotta get back to school, but I hope we'll be able to print it and then mold it and then make his chocolate. At the end of it, Clement does show us his process of how he made his his chocolate chip cookies and oh my goodness, I want those. But that is fantastic. But let me play a little excerpt of his and now tell me if you guys can see what's missing. Okay, if you all said, Mr. Sutton, I don't see anything that's missing, but I hear something that's missing, then pat yourself on the back because Clement's video is a rock solid awesome product, but it is definitely missing voice dictation, voice explanations telling me what's happening. And that's really important because otherwise all I'm doing is watching. I don't know what tools he's using necessarily. I don't know which ingredients he's using. And so Clement, you need to add a voice track to this that explains that. All right, let's look at one more. So there's this, the cacao, the milk, and all the other ingredients. Here's me breaking the shell. Okay, okay. This is a really great video. Also, Edo, you did a wonderful job. Pat yourself on the back. Woo! There is something that I would highly recommend you work on improving for the summative later, and this will be the same for many of us. Make sure we're using the correct language. So in this situation, Edo, for example, he breaks open, he says, I'm breaking the shell of the egg to get to the yellow thing. Now, I know we're all at different levels of language, and I myself, my Chinese is horrible, even though I've lived in China forever, I, I'm ashamed. But uh, there's a name for that yellow thing, it's called a yolk. And I saw this kind of thing happen in a lot of people's videos where we didn't always say the right name for the right tool or the right ingredient or the right um, material that you're working with. The wonderful thing about video and doing a voice overlay is that you can record it over and over again until you get the right thing. And if you don't know what that is, Google it, right? So it only takes a few seconds. If you don't have Google, use Yandex if you speak Russian or Bing if you really like to hunt for things. But search online, do a little bit of research, find the right names for everything and use that in the video. And another awesome thing is you don't even have to record it again. Now imagine right here, all Edo needs to do is when he says that yellow thing, he could put a text box that pops up, a little text effect in iMovie that simply says egg yolk. That way when I watch it, I hear him say the yellow thing and it tells me the name at the bottom and then I am learning both visually and uh, auditorily. I'm hearing, oh, it's yellow. So my eyes look for the yellow, I read, yolk and I get the name also. So that's a really good way to be descriptive visually and auditorially. And I, that's a wonderful way to fix this simple, simple little thing. So again, Edo, fantastic job. Luna, fantastic job. Uh, who was the other one? Oh, Sophie, fantastic job. Many of these videos are awesome. But make sure that the first half shows how to make your tour chocolate tourist treat. The second half shows how to make your homemade tourist treat. Okay, wonderful. Let's move on. Posters. So here's Jung Wan's on the left. This is so creative. I love it. Uh, it says my HTT, 
But I have to wonder if I was shopping in a market outdoors someplace and I stumbled across, would I know what an HTT is? No, I wouldn't. Remember, this is an advertisement. This is something to get the attention of your customers. So you need to give your product a name, right? Not just say HTT. Like this one says over here, this one doesn't have a name on it. it says, come and share, it's amazing. Green Valley, uh, this, is, this is fantastic, it's beautiful. And here's another one from Garen, which is really, really great. It's got a kind of a Caribbean beach thing happening, or it could be the Greek islands or a million places, I suppose. Um, but this is wonderful. And man, those cookies, look at that. Seashell cookies? How did you do that? Ah, I'm gonna have to watch your videos. So these are great. So many wonderful posters. Now, I, I really like those light things. I have no idea how that represents China uh, or with Belgium chocolates, but it gets my attention. And that is the goal of advertising, right? To get attention. So it's really, really good. These advertisements were fantastic. So keep those coming if you don't have it turned in. Woo, lot to talk about, huh? All right, next up, today's task. Today's task is two parts. Everything we just talked about was a review. I know, if you need to pause, go to the bathroom, do it, I'll wait for you. Okay, let's move on. So uh, the first part today is to just slow down, actually. Slow down. Take a breath and relax. Some people didn't turn in all of this. Some people have emailed and you're still working on it. Some people, I know two people broke their laptops this last week. ay yeah, yeah. So if that's the case, I'm, I'm going to say for today, slow down. Take some time and get caught up. So nothing really, really super important is assigned today, but there is something that we're still gonna do. So first thing is get caught up if you need to. Second thing is this. I want you to make a reflection, a self-reflection, one, one to two minute video. Not five, not 10, I will not accept it. A one to two minute video. It's a self-reflection of our entire process so far in virtual learning. Why am I asking this? Well, a couple reasons. One, it's always a great thing to review your own accomplishments, look for things that you did well, and try to identify the things you can do better. That's how we improve in life, is to reflect and review and try to understand. So that's the first thing. Um, this video, I want you to do that. I want you to outline what have you done well during this virtual learning period. And you can talk about specifically design, but if you wanna talk about other classes as an example, I'm fine with that. But I would really like you to focus on design. Since you only have one to two minutes, probably just stick to design actually, scratch all that. The second thing, I want you to talk about what you've struggled with. What has been hard in virtual learning? When you tell me that, that helps me learn what you need or what I can do better to make this better for you. Okay, so, so be honest. If, if I speak too fast and you don't understand what I'm saying, tell me to slow down. If you want uh, more, if you want live stream, live conversations, that's, that's fine, tell me. Um, if that's gonna help you, I'd really appreciate knowing. But we are doing that next week, as I said at the start of the video, so be ready. I would love to know what you like about virtual learning and then what you don't like about it. Again, this helps me build lessons going forward that will be better for you and more enjoyable for you. I would like you to tell me, let's move me, uh, how do you think you did with your HTT? Give me a self-assessment and be honest. If you feel that you did amazing, tell me. If you think not so good, tell me. But more importantly, tell me why. And this is how you learn to improve next time, by recognizing and admitting to yourself the areas that you need to improve on. That is the, like one of the most valuable things you can do when you're trying to improve is to first admit where you need to improve. Because if you don't admit it, you'll never make improvements, right? And lastly, if you have any suggestions, any ideas and things that we can do that make this better, more fun, more educational, whatever, to make virtual learning more enjoyable, and this could be for my class or any class, but let me know in this reflection. So what can you use to make your video? Well, obviously iMovie, but you could also make a keynote, make a PowerPoint 
and then screencast it, right? Record it like I'm doing and add yourself in there and talk about it. Do you have to show your face like I am right here? Ha! Ah! No, you don't have to, but I do require your voice. I want to hear you trying to speak this out as best you can. Um, so one to two minutes, self-evaluation, self-reflection of your process for the HDT and virtual learning as a whole. What's good, what needs to be improved, okay? That is everything I can think of for now. Uh, when you're done with the video, save it. It says on manage back specifically, I would like you to save it as a 720p. Oh, there's my wife, say hi wife. Where is she? She's trying to hide. Say hi, there she is, there she is. See, she's walking past, <laughs> she waved. Save it as a 720p resolution in iMovie or lower if it's too big. Drop it to a 520 or 540. Uh, how do you do that? Well, it's explained in this file right here. Three ways, ooh, where is it? Three ways to reduce iMovie file sizes. I shared this a while back, so if you didn't download it and open it, check it out. It'll help you make your videos smaller, uh, smaller megabyte size so that you can upload them faster. Okay, and you're gonna turn that video in. So that's it. Number one, take a break. Get caught up if you need. Number two, make this reflection and let me know how things are going. All right, that's it boys and girls. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm here if you have questions and get ready for a live class next week. More information coming by Wednesday. All right, miss you all, see you soon.